Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. Well, most global stock markets had a fantastic run there yesterday. Uh, you're looking at the US 30, the Germany 30, the UK 100, all did very well. Um, you also had Citibank reporting last night, which beat estimates by quite quite a fair degree. And uh, the markets actually had another intraday high yesterday. So uh, I think the, um, the high was uh, 17,072.6. And we're not a million miles away from there again right now. So we are quite close to uh, potential resistance. I put it on there at um, 17,080. That's obviously not quite uh, quite correct, but uh, pretty much bang on the top of this candle right here. Um, we give you a bit of a flavor of, of what to expect. So we've not had a, a, a big push higher this morning. I'm seeing the UK 100 already is trying to do that. Um, trend is still looking good. And we've still got Google. We've still got my fact, Google's today. You've got Intel. And, uh, and Yahoo as well uh, throughout the rest of the week. So we still got a lot of big companies uh, going to be reporting today. Uh, if we have a look at the UK 100, you can see we've got a lot of uh, room to recover uh, from the big sell-off that we had there last week. Um, but we have uh, been moving in the right direction. Next potential resistance at 6,074. Uh, and we were quite close to the end of the highs of today. Um, Dolly ends completely reversed course again. So I would expect that the Japan 225 is up higher again and as you can see we are looking to retest potential short-term resistance at 15.488 technical indicators are neutral and we're getting a crossover in the macd so there could be a little bit of juice in the tank for japan 225 so looking at dollar yen so i can see a lot of fx us dollar is strengthening uh we do actually have an update from the fed i believe the tie or tomorrow uh where people will be looking for clues as to uh, you know, interest rates as ever. So we know that QE is going to be coming to an end in October. Uh, but it's all about are they going to keep you know low interest rates for longer? A lot of financial commentators are um, of the belief that you know, regardless of the rhetoric coming from the Fed, the hard fact is as the economy starts to recover and things begin to heat up, there will be a need to um, to increase rates uh, sooner rather than later. So there is a lot about the rates will stay low for as long as it takes, but ultimately the Fed will have to take action. So. Every word that says, every statement that comes out, every minutes that comes from the Fed will be di will be dissected and digested by the uh, trading community, uh, and you know you can expect there to be some big moves in, in dollar. In fact, I'm already seeing on cable and you know dollar yen, we are already seeing a lot of positive dollar uh, movement and momentum. So maybe there is this idea that you know there could be a little bit more hawkish. It's dovish one minute, hawkish the next. It, it is really quite tough, but that's what being a trader is all about and you have to react to news as it comes out so we'll cover some of the other fx pairs in a second but dollar yen slowly creeping up a little bit higher above potential support at 101 spot 35 it's got a long way to go before it gets anywhere near 102 spot 87 um but that dollar yen move will help support japan 225 so keep your eye on any us nominated data uh, for more insight so west texas crude's bouncing off potential support at 100 spot 60 there's Certainly looks strategic in the short term. This is the level. If you're a crude oil trader, you want to be aware of. Um, we do have crude oil inventories due tomorrow as well, 3.30 UK time. So looking at gold, uh, gold had its uh, biggest one-day fall in seven and a half months yesterday. Real horrible candle right here. Uh, that's obviously dollar strength, risk back on, VIX down. Um, absolutely got smashed. It broke through multiple levels of support right here. We are looking now, next potential support is at 12.95, next potential resistance 13.32, um, but gold doesn't really look that strong right now. Unless the, you know, the markets really begin to dump, um, gold is not gonna be that sparkly uh, in the short term. So Euro dollar um, slowly drifting down again. Um, can't really make up his mind which direction it wants to go. That's not really that exciting. We're in the middle of two ranges, potential resistance one spot 36.45, potential support one spot 35.68. It is GBP USD that is more interesting. Um, and it really came off quite strongly yesterday. It's down again today. Next potential support, one spot 70.48. We're trading below the 21 period SMA. And I think a lot of people will be looking at one spot 70.48 with uh, some great interest. Now, if we have a look at the economic data wise, we do have CPI and RPI due out today. So if you're lucky enough to be watching this first thing in the morning, keep your eye on uh, cable and the UK 100 as, this, as these data sets come out. And then we've got the ZDW business report and US retail sales due today. And you couple that with US earnings season, there's actually quite a lot of fundamentals that are going to be affecting the market today. So do bear that in mind. Um, as we fast forward on to tomorrow, we've got a whole bunch of uh, Chinese data due overnight. We've got uh, 
GDP and industrial production, and that's going to be important. Uh, and then we do have uh, more UK data. So there's a lot of stuff UK-wise. So if you're a cable trader, UK 100 trader, there's a, a, a lot of things out there you want to be aware of and uh, you want to be able to react to. And remember, we do have the Creole and the Therese uh, due at 3.30. Keep your eye on the chart forum as ever. Make insights part of your layout. And join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.